Hello everyone, my name is Toronto and welcome back to My Church Video Games Part 2. If you are wondering what I'm drinking right here, uh, let me show it to you guys without me spilling it on my crotch. As you can see, I am drinking unfiltered concentrated piss. It tastes horrendous and it wakes me up better than coffee. You, sh you guys should try it. It's turmeric if you're still curious. I need my tea today because I need my uh, mouth warmed up because I'm gonna say a fuck ton of words and sentences and the best part is gonna be fun. Oh yeah, before I start, you probably noticed the audio is much different. It's less muffled now compared to last time because I thought it would be better if I use my earbuds like dangling down. I wish I told this in the part one video. I didn't say spoilers warning, so sorry if... Well, I did put it in the title, but hopefully people didn't get spoiled and hopefully I did not ruin their experience. <laughs> so yes, video... Not video, not video. Spoilers warning in this video also and the other one as well. Anywho, let's get started. Are you a short-tempered person? Do you get irritated and annoyed easily? And do you play video games? Well, if you said yes, you probably hurt your gaming device. Or maybe even yourself. And do you wish there's a calm and cozy game that you just sit back and relax? Well, I have the perfect game for you. It's called You will be facing one of the most serene hiking experiences. And plus, the Celeste Mountain is scattered with strawberries. Do you like strawberries? I like strawberries. I have them right here. Pretty tasty. You can blend them and make a shake, make a cake, or just eat them. Yeah, everything I said there was bullcrap. Except for the strawberries. The strawberries are good. but. In general, I don't get mad easily, unless it's computer problems, I absolutely hate it. Or I'm doing a physical activity, like if I'm doing something wrong or couldn't jump like A to B because I get scared, that frustrate, frustrates me. This game though surely tested my temper. Celeste is a hard 2D platformer. You jump, dash, and climb and maneuver your way through the obstacles. There are innumerable ways to die in this game. And thank goodness you respawn swiftly. What makes this game amusing is the level design and the movement. The character you play, Madeline, the, the protagonist, like, you control her so smoothly. Like, the gameplay is just so much fun to move around. Each chapter has new gimmicks to help you pass. And they do it so well that throughout the game, it does not feel stale or banal. It's so fun to like learn, like you die like so many times, like repeatedly and when you get to learn how to do that obstacle and pass that, overcome that spike that you despise, it's rewarding. basically finished the third hardest level. I played this game on the PS4 first and I believe using the controller is way easier. Oh, this is a PS5 controller, but you get the idea. After finishing the last chapter and playing for 70 hours, I have 
3,790 deaths in total. That includes the harder versions of each level. I've played many video games in my life and this is one of the most gratifying. I remember at 2 a.m. I was so mad at this one screen. It's so hard for no reason. I was playing for two hours and I was genuinely pissed off. At that time I started to value the skill of keeping my composure. I don't have anger issues, not at all, but I can manage to not swear or yell. However, if I get, if I reach my limit, I'll start like screaming into my pillow or start hammering it down <laughs> just to, to release that angry energy. I knew I wasn't enjoying myself at that point anymore, so I stopped. Take a rest, sleep, get back tomorrow, and eventually I do pass the obstacle with a sigh of relief. <laughs> it's a pretty common expression I had throughout the game because if you, there's just a lot of levels that makes you go mad, and there are some moments where I feel I'm, I'm insane. Do you know the definition of insanity? I just keep dying, dying and dying, doing the same thing. <laughs> the game does have a story. I won't go too much in detail, but basically, Madeline wants to climb the mountain because she wants a challenge to make her feel better. She's not in a good mental state, quite depressed, actually. There are parts of the game to which I relate so much. And it can be very adorable at times. So cute. Oh my. It's one of those games where it handles and discusses mental illness so well. For a simple 2D platformer like this, it made me tear up. One of my beloved scenes was the uh, when Madeline and Theo were just talking in the campfire. It, it, it was a moment part of the game I was not expecting. Because they're just chilling and talking about life, and trying to understand. They're trying to understand their problems and conflicts. The soundtrack in Celeste is genius. Not only the music fits every level in the game, but it also applies to Madeline's psyche. For example, Chapter 1, Forsaken City. The soundtrack is called First Steps. And when you hear it, it's bubbly, bright, and maybe even curious. This is what Madeline's first impression climbing the mountain and she's very optimistic, you can hear it. Chapter 2 is a dreamy and enchanted place, but also a nightmarish sequence, battling against herself. Chapter 3 in the hotel, the music sounds uh, random, but no, not random, but more like unorganized and lost. <music> Chapter five is Mirror Temple, and it's the reflection of Madeline's negative inner thoughts and hatred of oneself. This music actually is kind of
kind of sad. There's part of the music where if you go in reverse, you can hear Madeline actually talking. And whatever she said did hit me. If I'm in a like depressive state or not really in a good mental state, I really don't like looking at myself in the mirror. And that's what kind of similar to what Madeline was talking about. And that just hit me. Yeah, it's pretty just darn plaintive. Chapter 6, Reflection, is when you get to battle the outer ego of Madeline. And I was just at awe in this sequence. Not only the music is fucking badass, but also it was challenging. And the title of the track is literally called Confronting Myself. And with the gameplay being hard, it's pretty understandable that battling against yourself is just as complicated and hard as it can get. Before all this happened, there was a scene where Madeline is trying to get rid of that part of her. And that part of her backfired. And see, you can't really get rid of your the side of yourself that you don't like, the the person that you're not proud of. We have to forgive that person because that's literally you. No matter how imperfect that side of you is, it's what makes who you are. And that's fine, we don't need to ignore it or get rid of it. We just have to accept that side of us. That is what chapter 6 is about. After that battle scene, Madeline forgives herself by embracing. And I think that's so beautiful that this Simple 2D game did it so well. If you learn to forgive and understand yourself, almost everything can be possible. That's what chapter 7 is. You get to finally climb the summit of the Mount Celeste and eventually you do succeed. There are many YouTube videos who explain that I just talked about more profoundly. There's a bunch of videos, you can just watch those. Instead, I was confident enough to beat the game under two hours and also do push-ups every time I die. And I actually made a video about that. It's, it's kind of boring because there's not much happening. Just me dying and doing push-ups. I did like 300 in total, something like that. It's not bad. In conclusion, Celeste is just a beautiful game and also one of the hardest games I've played. Like. The amount of times I got mad, got tired, and my fingers ache, it's, it's still worth it. It's so good to play. If you want something that makes you mad, play this game. Like, seriously. <laughs> Just don't punch your wall like my friend does. Super Mario 64, ladies and gentlemen, specifically on the DS. 
It took me a while to choose the Mario game that I really liked. I play many Mario games. There's three ones that I had in mind, or four. So one is the RPG one, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Nintendo. I played that on the Game Boy and also the DS. And it was really fun. I really love the art style in that game, especially the Mario and Luigi design. It looks so cartoony and a little bit silly, I guess. There are funny moments that I, I really love when they start speaking gibberish. New Super Mario Bros. for the DS was also a good good tender. Out of all the platformers they had, that game is I played the most on the DS. However, I think Yoshi's Island was more was more unique. That, that was fun too. The the soundtrack is very charming and childlike, which fits the genre not genre but the setting of it. Everything's fine until Mario starts screaming like <laughs> I played Odyssey on the Switch. That was phenomenal. But after all that, I think the one that won is Super Mario 64. Does nostalgia blind me? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I played this game blind and the only reason I was able to play it was because my brother installed it into my DS. It was it was a Mario game that was I was completely unaware of. Intrigued by its open world setting. Mind-boggling to see my favorite Nintendo character move in a 3D space, you know? I'm actually surprised I finished the game. Though I'm not sure if I completed or collected all the stars. It might have 100... I think 120 is the max, maybe. I, I think I did. You have no idea how smart I felt when I looked up into the castle ceiling and stared at the sun, then it leads me to another world. <laughs> Moments like that I felt like I was a genius. Oh yeah, I also threw the penguin check off the cliff. During that time, I thought Super Mario 64 came out on the DS first until my classmate said he played the game on the Nintendo 64. I was dumbfounded. You're telling me the SNES, DS, and the Game Boys aren't the only Nintendo consoles? <laughs> Honestly, thank goodness I played it on the DS. Otherwise, it will be impossible to play Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario. The controls... <clears throat> the controls are kind of wonky at times. And I remember fighting Bowser and I can't throw him like onto the bomb. It's so hard. Oh yeah, shout out to Luigi for teaching me how to gamble, man. Such a cool guy. The DS minigames were good times, like it would make me lock in, test my vision, or watch and go, damn. Before adding Mario to the list, Zelda Breath of the Wild was the pick. The gameplay was more delightful, action-packed. The scenery is more atmospheric and jaw-dropping. However, Mario games impacted me more than I realized. In the first video, I said Undertale is the reason why I got inspired to learn music. Mario, on the other hand, is the reason why I love video game music. Koji Kondo is the composer of most Mario games, and his work, his work surely left a mark in my brain. Everybody knows, or most of the people in the world, knows 
this theme. It may just sound like bleeps and bloops and computer noises, but the music theory behind it is cool. Like, um, most of Koji Kondo's work are influenced by Latin, jazz, ragtime, and other influences. And what makes it so interesting is that back in the day, the S, the Atari, where the um, the original Mario Bros came out, there was only five sound channels. That means the composer has to be has to like dumb it down and be creative because they were so limited. They can't really add so many sounds in one console, even though how simple the Mario Bro theme is, it's so recognizable and catchy. What I found so cool is that there are so many melodies that I can hum and sing to. Half of them are Mario games I've never even played. And I think that just shows how great his work is. <laughs> this Italian plumber will always be one of the mascots in video game history and also the symbol of fun for people. And it's all thanks to you. Thank you all. Why do I sound like this? How did I get here? Well, I just went to a different place in my own studio. Definitely not somebody's house that I barged in. Is there a game that you've been meaning to play? It lingers in the back of your head, begging to be picked. Well, for me, it was Dark Souls. It is notorious for its hardcore difficulty and dark fantasy lore. Something I hadn't experienced until August 5th, 2023 when I bought Dark Souls 3 on my laptop with my trusty Xbox controller. I was already familiar with the franchise, like I've seen it on YouTube. Oh, this should be easy. Is that all you got? Bring it! Bring it, Brittany! Try jumping. Okay. You probably get like an item down here. No, you just died. Uh, my friends played it. Actually, I played Dark Souls 2 in my friend's house, and it took me like 30 minutes to defeat the first boss. I was actually need to go home at that time, so he was just he was just there watching me. He did not enjoy that time <laughs> because I sucked. <laughs> that little session I had convinced me to play it. I mean, it's a game that I've been meaning to face up to because it's one of those uh, top 10 things like gamers have to play because it's so hard and challenging and it's just a, like a legendary franchise and I actually played Mortal Shell before that it was like a not really a fan game but it's similar to Dark Souls it's not too hard quite easy actually so I'm not really blind playing Dark Souls so I had a little bit of experience. And plus, I already played Celeste, so how hard can it be? And so I did play it, and after customizing my character for half an hour, I chose the mercenary build, 
because I saw the the dexterity stat is high, so I thought it would be fun and it's dual wield swords. And luckily I did choose that because my friends say using the cell swords were like one of the best weapons in the game. So that made my gameplay a little bit easier. And also I changed my light attack, the R1, into X or square on PlayStation. I like I just like mentioning that bit because that pisses my friends off. <laughs> I'm sure to say that this game's atmosphere is so unique. It's blooded with corruption and misery. I had zero grasp of the story, game's lore whatsoever. So like I have no idea what's happening in the game. All I knew is as long as I defeat the bosses I'm winning. My friends did help me one of the levels because sometimes I get lost or uh, an item I need to pass a level but for the most part it's just me so especially for a game like this it's very crucial the three first bosses were easy until I met this scraggly version of the triangle head from Silent Hill during that night I wrote down what I went through and I'll read it for you guys <clears throat> Never in my life have I felt so devastated towards a game. I've felt anger and melancholy before due to the video game's difficulty or story. However, this is different. My determination and hope deteriorate as the hours pass thinking that I can finish the enemy. I can feel my wooden face as my eyes get pierced by the blue light. Innumerable deaths. Desperation to keep moving folly plaintive fingers as I yonderly sat on the on my chair turning off the game I realize this game is unapologetic this game is cruel this game is indeed a fact a humongous pile of dog feces this is Dark Souls I get it now I need to eat dinner Mexican servant, give me my quesadillas. Let it go. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, I struggled battling against the Abyss Watchers. When I witnessed one of them rose from the crevice, bro, my heart sank. Why would I need to fight two of them? It's it's frustrating. The funny thing is I discovered this boss before the Crystal Sage. The, that fellow is too easy, so I wish I beated her first so I can raise my attributes. But nope, I just went straight to the Abyss Watchers, which is a bad idea. After that experience, I acclimated to the world of Dark Souls. Pontiff Sullivan, Dancer of the Boreal Valley, and the Nameless King were the only biggest challenges I faced. After defeating High Lord Wolnir, the boss quality just skyrocketed. The presentation, the graphics, the the way they move, these lords just look so cool. The Nameless King boss, that guy was only an optional boss, but they went hard. My appreciation for him went higher when I learned about his cool lore and the cheeky Gwyn light motif in his team. The game's music is just perfect and my love for classical choir or orchestral music genre just gets higher and higher. Soul of Cinder is what I listen to often. I kind of wish I played Dark Souls 1 so I could fight Lord Gwyn because if you're, if you're a person who played the first game and play all the way through Dark Souls 3 and you fight Soul of Cinder and you hear that bling, 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 that must be crazy but I didn't have that experience so. fun fact when I was battling against the Nameless King I was recovering from a serious lumbar spine injury I think I herniated the disc because I didn't warm up properly, properly before doing a deadlift. Uh, yeah, it's kind of stupid of me. <laughs> Probably the second worst band I've ever felt. I remember I couldn't even 
barely walk around. I was like, I was like hunching like this, like moving slowly. Or sometimes I will even like crawl on the ground. <laughs> I should have went to the doctor. I don't know why. Maybe because I thought that that medical bill will go way high. But I treated myself by googling ways to heal. It's like recover exercises and ways to position myself when I sleep. Making sure I learn from my mistake and not give up. Just like this game or Celeste. It emphasizes on the value of failure. We should be more accepting of our errors and get comfortable with being uncomfortable for us to grow. Learn patterns and persevere. I'm no stranger to blunders. I've said hurtful words. I've done regrettable. I've done a regrettable slap. A. I had inadequate grades in academics. I've broken a bone. I have countless of strains and injuries due to reckless exercise. The feeling of failure is pretty strong. In other situations, it takes time to absorb one's fault and as long you're not giving up, you're winning. My anger was more tame compared to Celeste, and which I was proud of. And if you've never played any of these From Software games, try them. It will beyond doubt test your metal. Yippee! We have more. We have three more videos. No, not videos. We have three more video games to talk about after this, and probably come out in the same day. Not too sure, but we're in the long stretch. We're almost done here. Thank you, my friend, my, my servant, for... You want to come out in the camera? Hi. Yeah, he, uh... My friend let me go inside his house so I can record. Thank you, thank you.